Here we have a cross section of the spinal cord. Remember that this, the spinous process, is in the back. So that's the posterior side over here. And the anterior side is over here. First, we have the posterior median sulcus. That's this right here. And then back here, we have the anterior median fissure. This long groove right here. And then if we look here, we see a white portion and a gray portion. So again, posterior side back here. We have the posterior gray horns. We have the anterior gray horns. And then we have the lateral gray horns. And then if we look at the white section, we have anterior white columns, posterior white columns, and lateral white columns. And in the middle here, we have the central canal. And then connecting these two sides is the gray commissure. Now we're going to be talking about some layers of the spinal cord. We're going to orient ourselves based on this, the dura mater. So superficial to the dura mater, we have the epidural space that's filled with fat. And then deep to the dura mater, we have the subdural space. Deep to that, we have the arachnoid mater. And deep to that, we have the subarachnoid space. Then deep, again, directly surrounding the spinal cord, we have the pia mater. And then here on the sides, we have denticulate ligaments holding this in place. And then we have the dorsal or posterior root, which is this one coming out from the back side, because remember, this direction is the back and this is the anterior. And then the ventral root or the anterior root there. And then this enlargement is the dorsal root ganglion. And then where this all comes together right here is where the spinal nerve begins. So this is the spinal nerve. Here we have a model where we can see the spinal column a little better. We'll be jumping back and forth between this model and the spinal cord cross section. On this model we have the cervical enlargement which is around C2 to C7. And if we come down here we have the lumbar enlargement which is around T11 to L1. And at the very end we have the conus medullaris which is around L1 to L2. Branching off the tip of the conus medullaris is the phylum terminale. Coming off of the conus medullaris, we have a bunch of little fibers. Altogether, these are the cauda echina. Now we're going to be looking at four nerve plexuses. A nerve plexus is a network of intersecting nerves. The first plexus we have is the cervical plexus. That will be cervical nerves 1 through cervical nerve 5, right here. And the next one we have is the brachial plexus. That extends from cervical nerve 5 to thoracic nerve 1. And then we have the lumbar plexus, which is from thoracic nerve 12 to lumbar nerve 4. And then we have the sacral plexus, which is lumbar nerve 4 to sacral nerve 4. And that's right here. And if we turn it, we can see better that this all comes together to form this big network. Sacral plexus. And then up top again, we have this nerve right here. This is the phrenic nerve. Here we're going to be looking at the brachial plexus specifically. So we have spinal nerves right here, C5, 6, 7, 8, T1, cervical nerve, thoracic nerve, and those combine to become trunks. So we have the superior trunk, the middle trunk, and the inferior trunk. And those intertwine again to become cords. We have the lateral cord, the medial cord, and the posterior cord. Again, lateral cord, medial cord, posterior cord. Because this one comes to the medial side of the body, 
This one comes to the, later to the lateral side, and this one goes posterior to those two. On this model, we'll be looking at the terminal nerves to orient ourselves. We have the medial cord and the lateral cord. Beneath this artery would be the posterior cord. If we look at this structure, we can see kind of an M shape, like that. And on this side of the M, we have the ulnar nerve that goes down here. Then we have the median nerve that goes down here. And we have the musculocutaneous nerve that dives through the corcobrachialis. If we remove this bicep, we can see the musculocutaneous nerve innervation. And if we remove some of the muscles of the forearm, we can see again the median nerve going to the palm and the ulnar nerve going to the pinky. And this ulnar nerve is what you feel when you hit your funny bone. And if we look at the posterior cord, we see a branch here, the axillary nerve going there. If you remove the deltoid, we can see it coming out from the back here. If we flip around, we can see a little bit of the radial nerve protruding here. Protruding here. And another portion coming out here. This is a deep section of the radial nerve. This nerve right here is the subscapular nerve. Here we have another model of the arm. We can see the medial cord, the lateral cord, the M structure again, axillary nerve diving deep, subscapular nerve here, the ulnar nerve coming down, the median nerve coming down here. And again, we can see those underneath right here. If we remove this muscle, coming back, again, we can see part of the radial nerve. And we can see a part of it here again, too. We can also see the axillary nerve coming around the back again. Here we have another model that shows some of the nerves. We can see the cervical plexus, the brachial plexus. We want to look at this one here. We'll consider this the suprascapular nerve because we can't see it on our arm models. Here we'll be looking at some nerves from the lumbar plexus. First we'll orient ourselves right here at L1. L1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So first we have the genitofemoral nerve, this one, which is a merging of nerves coming off of L1 and 2. And then we have the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, this one, which is nerves merged from L2 and 3. And then we have this nerve here, the femoral nerve, from L2, 3, 4. And then we have the obturator nerve, which is a merging of L2, 3, 4 as well, and that's this one that comes down here. Down here we can see the sciatic nerve, which is coming from L4, 5, and S1, 2, and 3. We'll be looking at a couple nerves on this leg model. First we'll, first we'll remove the sartorius. We can see the femoral nerve here, branching to the saphenous nerve. If we come around here to the front, we can see what is possibly the saphenous nerve here, based on where it goes to the foot. And then if we come around to the back, we'll see some nerves of the sacral plexus. We'll remove the gluteus maximus and medius. We'll remove the gastrocnemius and soleus. And finally, we'll remove the semimembranosus, semitendinosus, and both heads of the biceps femoris. Here we have the sciatic nerve coming through here, and we have a branch to the common fibular nerve here on the pinky toe side, and the tibial nerve going all the way down here.
This nerve here is the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve and it is a blend of S1, 2, and 3.